This is John Culler with OKRaw.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you like no other. We're here at Shell Beach. This is Sonoma Coast State Park here in beautiful Northern California. Today is absolutely a beautiful day in Northern California with actually a helicopter uh, flying by there. But today's episode is gonna be about harvesting some wild foods. Now I don't mean harvesting some of the foods below me that I see that's growing in the ground, we're talking about sea vegetables. Now sea vegetables, I guess they're not technically vegetables at all in one way because when we think of vegetables, we think of collard, chard, kale, and things like that. Sea vegetables are actually not plants at all. They're really an algae, a more complex form of algae. You may think of algaes as spirulina or chlorella or Klamath Lake blue-green algae, but there's many kinds of algaes and the sea vegetables is a more sophisticated kind of alley, algae. So I like more sophisticated type things in life. So that's why I'm here today to take you guys down to the beach and show you guys some of the common varieties of sea vegetables, also known as seaweeds, uh, that grow here at Shell Beach that you can come to and harvest yourself. So yes, uh, in California, the state law says you can harvest up to 10 pounds per person per day. Uh, here we are in June and the June is probably one of the best times to be harvesting, maybe June, July, maybe late May, definitely a good time because the days are nice. There's a lot of more hours in the day so the light could hit the plants or the algaes and they could photosynthesize and even make more food for you to eat. Uh, you know, obviously when harvesting any wild food, I would encourage you to do it literally out in the wild, out in nature. Don't do it next to a big city where they're maybe pumping pollutants into the ocean or if you live somewhere where it's polluted, I would encourage you not to harvest your own sea vegetables. But harvest your own sea vegetables, number one, you're gonna get them the freshest. Number two, you can enjoy them fresh. Many people always think, oh, sea vegetables are dried. No, they're fresh. You can harvest them from here. They'll save for 10 days and you can eat them fresh during that time. You could also dry them for use later on down the road. So without further ado, let's head to the beach. So now we're overlooking the cliff that goes down to the beach and this is probably one of the ideal beaches to be harvesting seaweed from because there's a lot of rocks. Now obviously if you have a beach that's all flat where there's no rocks, the seaweeds can't affix to anything. So that's probably not a good beach to go to. In any case, you know the name of this beach so you guys can come out here and harvest some seed if, if you want. Otherwise, you're gonna have to find another beach that has seaweed available to harvest. Uh, that being said, there are a few restricted areas and generally it's not posted with signs, so do an internet search to find out if you can be harvesting seaweed where you wanna go. So next, let's go ahead and head down the beach and I'll show you what it looks like down there and tell you more about harvesting some seaweed. So now we're on the beach and you can see the area where all the seaweeds are growing all around me and be prepared when you come to harvest some seaweed you will get wet so I'm wearing some Tevas minimally or I'm wearing my Vibram five fingers today or maybe even some rain boots but you better be careful because it's uh, quite slippery out here I'd always encourage you to bring an extra pair of shoes, socks and change of clothes uh, rain boots just in case you get wet in case a wave hits you the best time to come to harvest your seaweed is at low tide so you could check out online for the low tide it, you have easier access to the seaweed at low tide besides that another thing that's going to come in handy are some scissors I like to use a child scissors with a blunt tip that doesn't have a point because you're going to be walking around and it may be a bit dangerous you know and you don't want to fall obviously on your scissors you also might want to have like a little sheath or something that you can put them uh, in a at your side after every use I put my scissors in the backpack so that I don't you know get hurt with them there's many different types of seaweeds you can harvest here on the beach and uh, over a dozen I'm just gonna go over the few of the common ones today one of which is this guy right here this is called is called the feather boa it's like a lay it's also even edible so maybe even give it to your uh, girlfriend or boyfriend as a gift. <laughs> this is quite leathery and it's edible and I don't necessarily recommend eating it. That being said, if it's green, brown, or red seaweed, 
most seaweeds are edible here. What we're going to do next is we're going to go around and show you a few varieties of the seaweeds here that you can harvest. First, we're going to harvest right near the ocean, near the water line, because different seaweeds grow there. And uh, some seaweeds like are deeper in the water and have little floaties that like to come up. And that's actually the kombu. Then we're going to go out there and then we're going to come in slowly uh, towards the shore. And we're here at the ocean and on the rocks and now we're going to harvest some kombu. So you can see the kombu is the ones that kind of like are hanging out of the ground over there or out of the ocean over there. You kind of see them floating and you could go get those ones but I'm here on the rocks and uh, gonna get these ones over here. So they kind of come up like this and they actually attach themselves uh, with root-like things. And this is the uh, plant right here. You can see I'm pulling up. And this is the part you'd cut off right here. This is the part that's edible. It'll probably shrink to about half the size once it's dried. You could dry it in the sun or a dehydrator. Um, so what you would do to be most sustainable is you'd take what is uh, kind of like the stem, but it's not really a stem. You'd come up where it attaches. It almost looks like a mermaid flapper thing. <laughs> and as it comes up here, it starts to separate. And as it separates right there, then you'd take some scissors, uh, you know, right about at this point here, so, and then just cut. And then you have a leaf of kombu you could now take home. There's just literally acres of seaweed here at the coast, just so much, all the different kinds. Now what we're going to look at is a nori. So this is fresh nori, not in nori sheets, but this is how it actually comes on the rocks. Let's see if I can get out the sun there. And this is what it looks like. It's a one cell algae, really thin. And when it grows on the rocks, it's, uh, it fixes to the rock. And this is how it looks when you just start to pull it out. This is kind of younger. But then this piece here, it's affixed to the rock here. Then comes out. I mean, this is almost like a foot long. And uh, to get the nori sheets, what they do is they take this and actually it's like paper making. So they break this up into small pieces and then actually uh, put it on screens so that it all congeals together. Uh, when harvesting seaweed, you need to be careful. There's like little snails and animals in here. So you want to be uh, mindful of them because this is their home after all. So to harvest this nori, what we're going to do is we're just probably going to take the scissors and make a snip right here and I'll have some fresh in order to eat fresh or you could dry it and save it for later. Uh, fresh it probably should save about a week. Next more seaweed harvesting so I've been uh, harvesting some nori and now we're going to show you guys some uh, sea lettuce. So the sea lettuce it's uh, mixed in with all these other kinds of seaweeds which uh, are edible if they're red brown or green seaweeds they're edible and but down here there's one that's nice and bright green you can probably see that on the camera and this is actually called a sea lettuce. Now these guys, this is probably a fairly large one. A lot of the other ones I've seen have been much smaller. And uh, this is uh, pretty thin also, but it'll probably take you a lot of time to uh, harvest it because they don't get very big and they grow more towards like where the sand is. So they may be uh, a lot more sandy than some of the other varieties. <laughs> so on this, you're gonna check out where the attachment point is, which is right down here. That's where the connected to the its root like structure and you're gonna come above that a little bit and clip it off and leave some on there so that it can continue to regrow. Still on the beach harvesting some seaweed and there's just so much of it out here the next thing we're gonna uh, let you guys know about is a seaweed that I just learned about and actually it's right here all below me and we'll do a close-up this is actually called a uh, sister Sarah the unique thing about it, it has all these little uh, appendages that to me look like Chinese artichokes. And if you don't know what Chinese artichokes are, uh, look it up on YouTube for my video on that. This would probably make a cool salad, Chinese artichokes and Sister Sarah. It'd be a really interesting texture and they look actually fairly similar. So uh, this is edible in all its uh, forms. Um, I kind of like them when they're like this, they look like uh, little worms or something. So this would be really cool to like mix in a salad or mix in a, even a seaweed salad trick people there's one a uh, single one in my hand there and they got a nice texture they're kind of hollow in the middle if you dry them they'll probably get really hard but uh, you could pickle these guys and they probably pickle up pretty good so besides this is kind of when they get more mature and that's kind of like the middle of the plant down at the bottom the base of the plant you can see the uh, harder leaves and you could probably eat those but actually they're quite hard 
and they'd probably dry pretty hard too so you'd have to definitely rehydrate those to eat those and then uh going down further you could check out the end of the plant here this is actually probably about like four feet tall and the end kind of looks like this kind of like little i don't know uh, ferns or something like that and these tips are delectable you can just basically pick off the tips and uh, just eat them like that now more seaweed harvesting so you can see here here's some nice uh, sea lettuce down in here a little bit dried we're probably gonna harvest some of that stuff there nice and green nice and thin it's kind of similar to nori up here we have a lot thicker seaweed this is actually called the bladder rack bladder rack uh, high in minerals often uses like little uh, tinctures and stuff get some minerals back in you also makes what's called the fucus tips I don't like this so much thicker seaweed but it's still good nonetheless so we're gonna go ahead and go up to this you can see this is a little plant right here that'd be cool if your head was like this and this was your hair uh, but we're gonna come and probably snip off just a few little sections here and uh, be able to take that home Once again there that's what it looks like and we're probably gonna snip it right about here still harvesting seaweed I'm kind of more in a little bit and this is an area with a whole bunch of little tide pool like things and uh, each environment here at the beach is going to have different kinds of seaweed so the kombu kind of grows out more towards where there's water it could float and then there's other kinds that are grown on the rocks and uh, there's even other kinds in here in the tide pools so there's uh, me hello <laughs> probably my favorite seaweed that i found today is this stuff right here i don't know if you guys see it on the camera it's actually kind of like underwater here and we could go ahead and see it underneath there and we'll pull some up here for you guys so uh, we don't have actually dulse uh, here on the Pacific Coast, but this is a plant uh, probably related to the dulse. Right here, it's a purple seaweed. This has a nice, very mild flavor and taste, almost melts in your mouth. Uh, by far, this is my favorite one, and uh, I don't know the name of it. So, uh, yep, definitely this is the best stuff. Purple seaweed. I like purple. Now we're actually uh, almost on the beach area, or the rocky beach here. And uh, you know, once again, in each different area of the uh, ocean, there's different seaweeds. And the next one we're gonna look at is right here. Likes to be kind of like uh, more dry, more near the land versus in the sea. This stuff's actually called Turkish towel. And they call it Turkish towel because if you look at it, and this is a small piece, they get actually much larger and actually thicker. It's still pretty young right now. That's because like on here, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's a texture. It's almost like little, sandpaper so this could be used for like exfoliation for like body care you know you could grow loofahs which are a type of gourd to do this but you could also come to the sea and get some Turkish towel you're gonna pop that piece off and there's a small piece right there and uh, you could dry that and use it uh, kids love to play with it like in the bath it'll naturally break down maybe after 10 days uh, but once you're done using it, just set it out and it'll dry again and you can continue to use it as it'll actually naturally dissolve. This stuff is edible, but probably not too palatable. So it's probably best to use it, you know, for uh, body care. Also, maybe uh, your dog might like to chew on it actually when they get nice and older. They get actually nice and firm, almost like the uh, texture of a, like pig ear dog treats. And uh, these guys, once again, because they're a sea vegetable, high in minerals. I've had a great time here at the beach harvesting seaweed. Now this is about 10 pounds of seaweed. Now once again, fresh seaweed weighs a lot because it has like 80% water weight. So if I did dehydrate this stuff, it would probably be about two pounds of seaweed, which is not a whole lot, but guess what? Harvesting your own seaweed will save you an incredible amount of money. Some seaweeds can sell for up to $60, $75 a pound. So that's insane uh, once dried. So this could be potentially $100, $150 worth of seaweed that I just harvested in just a short amount of time. That being said, if you do want to preserve your seaweed for later use, you should definitely dry it. You could dry it in the sun or even a dehydrator at low temperature. But I would rather you consume all your foods as fresh as possible. So the seaweeds that I fresh harvested today will probably stay good maybe about a week to 10 days. You want to keep it like probably in the fridge and you keep it a little bit moist. I wouldn't necessarily wash it until you're ready to use it. Once you start using fresh water on these things, they'll start to actually degrade. So uh, just rinse it as you need to use it and then eat it and enjoy it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode learning more about harvesting your own edible wild seaweeds. 
Once again, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables, including sea vegetables.